Hi there! My name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part 5 of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today, we're going to swap out the default UFE menus, selection screens, and battle GUI with custom menus to make our example game look more complete. To take a look at all these default user interfaces in UFE, we can go to the heart and soul of our project, the global settings editor, and we can scroll on down to GUI options, and we see a few things here. First, this is the transition settings for how you transition between screens. This is scaling settings for how those screens are scaled on your screen. And then finally, about screens, we have a list of all the different screens and menus in UFE. From here, we can open any menus prefab with the click of a button, like I can click open on the main menu here, and it will be added to our open scene. So right now it's in the Demo Fighter 2D scene. Uh, it's a bit crushed for some reason, but we, we won't worry about that. Um, but anyway, you can edit stuff in here, but it won't be permanent. You can open and close these to view them just like a character file, but to actually edit them, we've got to click our main menu script here, and we can get teleported right to whatever prefab we want and then we can manually edit the prefab when you open it up. It seems like there's a lot of screens to go through here, but don't get overwhelmed because most of these screens are edited in the same ways, and we can divide these screens into three categories. First is button-based interfaces, like the main menu, options, and pause screen. Second is selection GUIs, like the character and stage select. Finally, we have the battle GUI, which is in a bit of a realm of its own. Every GUI in each category is edited in the same way, so once you know how to edit the main menu, you'll know how to customize the pause menu and all other button-based GUIs. So with that in mind, this video we're going to look at one GUI in each category, so you know how to edit them all. Let's start with turning the main menu into something that matches my game dev brawl idea. To make a new main menu, I'm going to click the main menu script here, and instead of just opening this up and editing it, I'm actually going to click the main menu and then press Control D to make a copy of it, just so we have the original main menu in backup. And then I'm going to call this dev brawl main menu screen. I'm going to open this up, and the first thing I'm going to do is move these buttons to where I want them to be. I want my buttons to all be on the left side of the screen, so in order to accomplish that, I have to head over here to Anchoring Settings, and this is where your icons will be on the screen most of the time, regardless of resolution. So right now, all the buttons have a bottom anchor, which means regardless of screen size, they're always going to gravitate towards that bottom of the screen area. Since I want them to the left, I'll anchor them all to the left, and I can also press Shift and Alt to set their position and anchoring to that same left location. From this starting point, I'll arrange these buttons to be where I want them to be. I'm also going to select all my buttons and give them a blue, non-transparent color. And then I'm going to go down to Add Component and give them all a white outline. I'm also going to change the color of my text as well here by, again, just selecting all of it, going to Color, and making it white. Now we can see that the buttons are kind of blending into the background, so let's swap that out. I can make a custom replacement sprite in a photo editor, or if I'm really cheap, I can just download some free textures from the Asset Store. If I want to do that, I need to remove the original image component and then add a raw image component instead. From here, I'll drag in my material and adjust some of its scaling. And in order for this to actually appear in the game, I've got to go down here and make sure its shader is set to a UI default shader. For my font, I can swap it out with one of the eight fonts UFE automatically provides or I can use a font from a free font provider like Google Fonts. Once I have the font I want, I can just grab it, put it in the font slot, and then scale up the font size if I need to. 
Next, I can add this custom logo by just GM by right-clicking an empty space in the prefab and adding a new image to my main menu. Make sure to anchor any new images you add to the areas you want them to be tied to. Finally, for the title, I can add a text object in the default Unity outline script. I can also add the UFE text gradient tool to make something that looks nice enough until an artist takes over. Now to make this our new main menu, we have to go back to global settings, see where main menu is, and just find our own here and drag it in. Now we're almost perfect. I can click one of these menus and it'll send me wherever. Um, however, this really isn't animated. And secondly, if I move my arrow keys around, I start up here at training mode when I actually wanna start down here at versus. So if I wanna change what button is first selected here, all I have to do is go back to our main menu. And then right here, it has first selectable game object. And I'm just gonna drag in our versus mode. I also recommend following this tutorial by Blackthorn Prod to make buttons that grow when selected. It's three simple steps that really give your UI some life. And with that, our main menu is perfect. Onto the character select. Most of our editing is the same with replacing the background, fonts, and whatever art pieces you want. Some important things to note is that all of these things with question marks are just temporary images that get replaced. When the game actually runs, this question mark is going to get replaced by an image here while the border stays the same. Another thing to note is that this artwork of player one, player two, and both of them, these are your cursors. They're automatically like put there in UFE, but this image just overlays the character portraits as you scroll across them. Once again, when I'm done with my edits, I'll go back to my global settings and drag in my new character select screen. The new character select works well, but what if I wanted to add more characters, like Deus from Let's Talk Game Designs Reiterate and Jeff from Danny's Crab Game over here? All I need to do is copy some character slots here with a simple Control D. Then I need to add these character slots to the character slot array up in the default character selection screen script. As a general rule of thumb, if a menu has any specialized functions, the way to edit all of them is by visiting the screen script. And there we go. Now I have room to support all of my characters. Now this is nice, but I don't think these default characters up here fit our game dev YouTuber theme. So I'm going to get rid of them and then add a custom element just for this game. Now I can't edit how the character select screen works too much unless I have the source engine of UFE. However, I can still add on to it. What I want to do here is add two elements under the character that give us the YouTube channel name and the YouTube channel logo so people know who made each character. To make this work, I'm going to make a script that basically reads what the character name is and then sets the logo and channel name accordingly. First, I'll make a slot for the character title text object, one for the channel name, and one for the channel icon slot. Then, I'll make a variable for each of the channel icons. Finally, I'll just check what the character name is, and then update the channel name and icon accordingly. And with that, our character select screen is perfect. Finally, the battle GUI consists mostly of elements we've worked with before, with simple text and images. Even the round counters near the top work like the character select slots we just messed with. When we add more round counters, we need to add them to the default battle GUI script for UFE to work with them. The only new complicated elements are these horizontal and radial bars that make up the health bar and gauges for the player. We have a separate video that talks about how to make more of these bars from scratch that I'll link to at the end. But for now, we're just gonna replace the standard health and gauges bar images. And for this, you can't just use materials. You have to make custom art, which I know is miserable for some programming folk like me, 
so the bars I'll use in this video will be available in the description. So I can take my custom artwork and replace the life bar border, and that's fine, but sometimes when you drag new artwork into this life bar fill, things get a little tricky. The image type will automatically switch to simple sometimes, so to fix that, all you have to do is switch this to filled, and what this is is the element that makes your bar a bar. It is how much the bar is filled, and you can adjust whether this comes from the left or right, whether it's horizontal or vertical, and so on. So I'll keep my health like this, but actually I'm going to edit my gauges here to make them come from the outside of the stage and fill in inward instead of from the inside of the stage and fill in outward. With that done, all we have to do is toss our new battle GUI into our global editor here, and we can see the beautiful results of our work. And with that, we now have a fully customized user interface for our game. With that done, we're ready to move on to the next part, which is all about making enemy AIs for training and story modes. I'll see you then. Bye.